This poster of My Fair Lady is almost something that, was, uh, that wouldn't have been made. If it was up to Hirschfeld, he did not think you could improve Pygmalion with songs and dances and tried to convince the show's director, Moss Hart, that, it was, that he should abandon the project. Not only did Moss Hart not abandon the project, but Hirschfeld was asked to do this advertising art for the show long before it was actually a real production. And not only did they make a great musical called My Fair Lady, but it created one of the most identifiable pieces of Hirschfeld art there is. Carol Channing believed that Al Hirschfeld made her a star. Uh, he, she was in an off-Broadway review and he did a drawing of supporting players whose numbers stopped the show and he put her in the center of the drawing and she said that's what made everybody notice her and the next show that she did was Gentlemen Prefer Blondes which was a big hit and she went on to have a great musical theater career. In 1964 she, was in, she premiered in her most famous role as Dolly Levi in Hello, Dolly. And this drawing is a great example of how Hirschfeld's drawings began to look, the people began to look more like Hirschfeld's drawings than the other way around. And in this drawing, there are two Ninas. They're hidden away right here on her dress. And in every drawing since his daughter's birth in 1945, he has hidden her name someplace in the drawing. He wants to make it hard, but not too hard to find the, the Ninas. Okay. On this wall in the exhibition, we not only have examples of his drawings that appeared in newspapers, but we have examples of his, how his drawings appeared in posters, because they heralded shows not only in the pages of a newspaper, but on the walls all over the city. This is a, a, a musical called Fade Out, Fade In that starred a very young Carol Burnett before she found fame on television. And it was a Julie Stein musical. Um, this was, uh, the image was so popular that it was used on the program cover and on the album cover because it so summed up the entire production. Al Hirschfeld sat in a barber chair for almost his entire career doing his drawings. He thought it was the last functional chair in America because it went up and down, it swiveled, and when he was tired it could turn into a Shea lounge. Uh, he bought his first chair for $10 on the Bowery and used that for a good long time until his friends decided that they were going to lose Al Hirschfeld to tetanus because it had a spring coming out of it and there was duct tape on the, uh, on the arm. And so uh, we found this uh, old chair, this uh, white porcelain and red leather chair from the old Chrysler building, uh, barbershop and we brought it up to his studio and for the last 10 years of his career he worked in real style. He only used two barber chairs his whole life and this is the one that uh, he used in the last 10 years.